Yeah, I'll second. Right. So they're not they're asking to get rid of the two a.m. say at seven a.m. just make it at twenty four hours no parking. No, 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 no. Yeah. Hydrant side they want no parking all the time. On, on the non hydrant side, they want no parking two a.m. to seven a.m. That keeps people from using the street as a parking lot. I'm all for it. No parking. <laughs> street All right, I'll second. Mr. Yes. Mr. Beaver? Yes. Yes. Mr. Chair, can I talk to my first? Yes. Um, with the ABC and with everything that's going on with the stormwater, Mike, we sent out a bid for the um, jobs. Right, and they're to be turned in at 2 o'clock uh, next meeting, April 10th. We're going to open next meeting. Um, quick question. What? What would it take for us to put a levy on to eliminate the ABC because I just don't like taking money from our township without your vote? If we put a levy on and went direct, we use this money the same way as the ABC does, just direct for those resources. Well, there, there's, there's, one, there's one section under the levy section uh, that has talks about flooding. Okay, and if that and if that was put on the ballot and passed, then that money would have to be used for stormwater issues. So we can use it for we need a backhoe or whatever we need to service it. You you can make an argument that you need yeah you need the backhoe to, to do the stormwater so you can use it to purchase the backhoe and the money would be there. I have a question on that. Then. Yes, he brought this up. Yes, he can't pop this up. The money we get from the levy, um, I know there's some swells that go through the property, people's personal property that we're not right now allowed to touch, but it is a violation of um, tax dollar usage. Would this levy allow us to go and correct those personal property issues? No. I'm not talking about fresh drains. Not like a swell like uh, countryside in the road. Not unless they give us, if there's no easement, they have to give us an easement in order for us to mm -hmm. use, use the money on their property. And the only only way we do that is if by working on their property, they give us an easement, and by working on their property, we're preventing downstream flooding. Yeah. Oh, correct. Yeah. yeah. But no, just because the levy passes, that doesn't allow us to go on private property. But that levy would be just <laughs> for the water. If it's passed, it's the flooding. If the flooding language is what's passed, yes, it cannot be used for road resurfacing or road maintenance. I know this is a controversial issue, um, which is why I wanted to do a uh, town hall to discuss all the options, but just to make it clear that our first option is find the money internally, go into our state legislators. This is just one option that we should be considering while we're waiting for one of them to call and say yes or no. I don't want to sit here and just twiddle my toe and thumbs, wait for a representative patroller or state representative or Anyone? The police say, hey, no, we don't have, we can't give you the money, and now we got to start from scratch. I like to prepare ahead of time to make sure, hey, listen, Al, okay, I get it, you try, I said, no, that's fine, do it up, next step, next step, next step. This is not a primary use of guidance, I agree. I think that I would not want to go to the um, taxpayers and get money without a vote, but knowing that the money is restricted and we can use it on a whole variety of other issues as well to help residents. But I think this is part of your conversation for a town hall. You can go more in depth and have the whole board from the ABC district here, regardless if it's on what we're doing or not. Um, I think it's out and out, and the residents have the right to know to at least know all the details of the district and how it can benefit the pros and the cons. Okay, since the um, Chief Chapter is not here, I will um, go ahead and do the motion to authorize Austin Town Township Peace, Peace, Peace Officers to make an arrest and enforce specified traffic offenses on state highways, including and highways that is part of the interstate highway system or otherwise a part of the national highway system located within Austin Town Township. Yes, Mr. Yes. 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 Yes.
Uh, what this is is Medicare Medicaid requires that a billing process uh, be put forth by resolution. And um, I have, what we've done is we've taken what everybody else in this area is doing and we just duplicate it. So it's the exact same as, as everyone in this area is doing. Um, and on this uh, includes would be soft billing for our residents, which means we just take what the insurance takes, and then folks that are not our residents uh, would be it's called hard billing, which would be the, the full billing that uh, would be done. And again, this is what you're going to see in Maryland and everywhere else that, that does get nice to and we're just making what they do. So asking for a resolution. Motion to approve resolution for EMS billing procedures for Austin County. Second. Mr. Stanford? Yes. Mr. Kent? Yes. Mr. Jeeper? Yes. <coughs> Zoning department. All right, I've got the board approved the nuisance resolution under Highway 7527. I declared following the properties of public nuisance. Lot number 154, bar 4310, Kirk Road, lot number 6, Kirk Road, lot number 4470, Harding Avenue. Fire defense that's supposed to serve the whole property is it down in the day. 6105 Mahoney Avenue, three branches. A lot of them were cut last year. That's the corner of the Wilcox Avenue. 129 North the Bar, 143 North the Bar, 681 Notre Dame, Jumping the Great, 5360 West Rock over the Roof Stagnant Water, creating another from basement 12, I'll go into that in, in another motion. Uh, 2057 South Turner crash. Uh, hopefully we'll get that picked up tomorrow. It's just bags behind the house that I want to remove before the address rats. Second. Mr. Kent? Yes. Mrs. Deaver? Yes. Mr. Stanton? Yes. All right, I would ask the board to approve a motion to find following modifications to all the following criteria. Three model years or older are currently inoperable, extensively damaged, including but not limited to any of the following, following the single tire engine transmission, and declared following vehicle public nuisance under Highway Code 5871, and for the removal of the vehicle within 14 days after notice is served to the property owner. 681 Notre Dame Avenue, inoperable, <coughs> dismantled, unlicensed green vehicle. Park in exposed manner within the front yard. They could not park it in the back. They had to put it in the front yard. And I've got a picture of it. I could, figure, I could figure out what it was. And I had Katie today. And Katie said maybe it's a Honda. That's, that's uh, what it appears to be, yeah. Mr. Kent thinks it's a Honda, so I guess Katie was right. But it's a mess. <laughs> Oh, second. Sorry, I'm just one of the <laughs> 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 so, yes, yes. Mr. Cash? Yes. Mr. Peter? Yes. Um, then I would ask the board to approve a motion to adopt the resolution attached to make part of the minutes of the meeting pursuant to High House Code 5586 for removal, demolition. A single family dwelling located at 5360 West Rockville Road, Austin Township, County, Ohio, 44515. Said property being further described as parcel 48 031 0 081, lot number 195, Abraham, lot number 2, based on the structure being declared insecure, unsafe, and structurally defective by the Austin Town Township Fire Inspector. Uh, this property has uh, passed before this board twice, and neither time did I take any action. But I think last October and November, you approved a nuisance resolution to remove a very large tree that fell on the house. It's, it's almost destroyed the benefit of the house. And I did send a couple uh, tree removal firms out uh, to give me some price, because one vendor was advised by a homeowner that the tree would be removed, the house would be repaired. But his insurance company hadn't been there because they were tied up with the storms in Florida. I know. Okay. Nothing happened. I brought this back. I think the end of January because nothing happened. And then subsequent to that, a neighbor advised me that the house was vacant. So I asked the fire inspector to look at it, and he declared it a 
construction we can find some. So we are moving forward with that demolition. It's also in the foreclosure. The local bank has the mortgage on it. Uh, our goal here is to tear the house down. And when I do that, we'll remove, there's actually a second tree that fell with this school. So we'll remove the two trees. And also on the previous agenda that you approved, uh, the next door neighbor says the basement has about eight foot of water, and she says it's creating an odor. I told her we'll pump it once, and so I'll, I'll get that pump. But beyond that, my goal here is to take the house down. So I would ask the board to approve that motion. Second. Second. Mr. Santa? Yes. Mr. Cass? Yes. Mr. Peter? Yes. Okay, thank you. Clerk to see the Um, We had a little bit of damage from the storm, not uh, nearly as much as I probably would have. We had uh, six trees down, four of which we handled ourselves. Uh, two of them have to get the company out to take care of. Then uh, a bunch of branches and debris logged up our overflow drain to the pond so the pond did overflow quite a bit uh, we're stopped the walking path between the uh, soccer fields and the pond so we'll have to repair that, uh, that path and of course a lot of debris and branches down all throughout the park and all the other south bank parks so, so it takes a little while to get everything cleaned up and of course we lost power at the station but it did seem to affect the uh, the baby shower that was going on, I guess it caught them at the tail end. So they were able to get through their baby shower, they just couldn't put anything away. So uh, Mary had to do some rushing Sunday morning to get it ready for the next one on Sunday morning. But like I said, it's uh, a lot less damage than I thought we were going to have. So I have. Did you get a good speech to you about the work? Yes. Discount as per cash. So move this Second. Mr. Deaver? 
Yes. Mr. Sanchez? Yes. Mr. Kennedy? Yes. Just check something. That's okay. Go ahead. I was just going to say, I just want people to realize that we did get different quotes from this man. And um, we know that Fred Martin was fair. So that's why they have chose that. And also, Mr. Robert Santos did most of the work of trying to go and get this. So I'm going to let him go ahead and talk. <laughs> um, well, I appreciate, obviously, um, I think it was Jim that originally brought it to our attention. The vehicle they do have now, I keep calling it transit. What's it, what's it really called? Yeah, we've got two vehicles. So we've got like a regular cargo passenger van, passenger van. And then we've got a 16-passenger uh, bus that does require a CDL. We do not have a CDL driver to drive it. We have tried asking bus drivers if they can drive it, but then that limits um, our trips to pretty much the summer when they're not driving the kids around. Um, so what we want to do is condense our vehicles and then get one 13-passenger high-top transit vehicle that's going to be a little bit easier for our seniors to get in and out of because right now the passenger van we're using, they can get in and out of it, they're not happy campers about it. Um, so this will at least give us a better vehicle for us to take. Talking with Talking with Jessica at the senior center, she said, well, she's not going into any of the um, garages, though. <laughs> yeah, no. <laughs> no garages. But she can, she can drive this one. Yeah, going in with the car in the van and parking garages was a little scary. Yeah, not at high top. Yeah, no. She can drive it, but she's not going in that parking garage. Yeah. Okay. No, that's all right. I'm just glad we're able to do this because it's preventing a lot of seniors from going on a trip. We have that one eight pastor van, which is hard for even us to get in and out of. You know, this is definitely the biggest vehicle you can get and you can drive it, you don't need a CDL. I think it's, you can see it, you know, it's on the side. It won't be getting plenty of questions. Do you have anything else for us, Jessica? No, that was it. Thank you. Fiscal officer, I don't have anything new. I mean, we have the, the appropriations for <laughs> 2023 out here in the permanent, but other than that, I don't have anything. At this time, we'll have a motion to approve February report submitted to the board at the March 13, 2023 meeting. Her, her agenda A through E. Get a question just for you. The Alberts and Alberts of 782.55 for the ABC Water District, do you know what that's from? That's just what we pay every year. It's the attorneys that work that. That's isn't it? Like that's like our contribution. Um, well, we end up always paying something. In this case, I believe there was there was a question, a uh, general question as to um, that applied to all of us as to uh, the authority of the water district. And so that's what we shared in the, the cost. Before I can, Mr. Kent, yes. Mrs. Deaver, yes. Mr. Sanchez, yes. Before I go on to new business, um, Mr. Robert Navalier, our chief police, is here. So, uh, if he has anything to say, I just want to read an email I received from Steve Center Dispatch Supervisor in reference to Saturday to ask him how things went, and I thought it'd be. Uh, some uh, news or that you would like to hear uh, <coughs> whether that we had and, and here he speaks about CAD and so everybody knows CAD's computer aided dispatch and when a dispatcher takes a call and someone calls in and says I need a car here and there they not only take that call they're, they're entering the computer aided dispatch all the information so as they're talking they're entering all this information but I'll um, a short email and uh, it says, as you're aware, the weather caused a lot of issues this past Saturday. Our dispatch center handled an extremely elevated volume of calls beginning around 2.30 p.m. Thankfully, this was around shift change, so we had a few extra sets of hands to help with the unexpected rush. For a solid four hours, between 2.30 p.m. and 6.30 p.m., our employees filled in 143 911 calls, which typically averaged 35 to 40 in a four-hour stretch. Between this and approximate 300 plus 
incoming calls on our 10 digit, 10 digit lines, our dispatchers logged 252 calls for service that required a dispatch to the CAD. Just to give you an idea, on a normal Saturday for four hours, we typically log 30 to 40 calls for CAD. We were also taking calls for Fordman and Trumbull County as their overflow due to all their lines uh, being tied up. Our employees that were to come off duty at three didn't hesitate to stay and assist for the next three to four hours until things were beginning to clear up to allow normal staffing. One of our dispatchers had come in at 3 a.m. that morning due to a call off on midnight turn and stayed until 6 p.m. to help. Just another example of the hard work our folks put in when needed, making sure all calls requiring response got one and doing their best to make sure no incoming calls went unanswered. It's from Steve Sen. Well, I can personally say that I was one of the callers. I called them two or three times that day. Um, residents were told me that. <laughs> <laughs> and um, he handled the conversation very well. And it was there sounded like everything was being taken care of. And we appreciate that. Um, both the chiefs. I'm sure you guys both had a busy Saturday. And a little bit after that, too. <laughs> Things go on. We appreciate that. We also appreciate the senior center being open for um, stayed open in case anybody needed um, to stay warm, of course, and for charging center, we appreciate it. We appreciate that. Um, new business. Motion to approve 2023 perm permanent appropriations. Um, second. Mr. Kent? Yes. Mr. Sanchez? Yes. Mrs. Deaver? Yes. Motion to approve the 2023 budget for the Austin Town Board and Mahoney County Joint Communication District COG. So moved. Second. Mr. Kent? Yes. Mr. Deaver? Yes. Mr. Sanchez? Yes. Motion to approve an audit agreement provided by a audit of State Key Favor Office for $60,000 to audit Parks, Roads, and Administration Department. Payment to be tied by each department $20,000 from each fund. If, if I can make it a motion to table it, um, I think um, it's important that we actually add all the departments on, and it's going to take a while for Keith Taylor's office to come back and add on the other three departments. Um, might as well do it all in one instead of just three. That way we're saving some money so we don't have everything at once. Uh, I'm not sure how long it would take them to get back. I want to, want to say let's table it to the next meeting and then. We had a financial audit in 2021. 20, no, am I right? 2021, um, Mike? The last one was completed, right? The financial yeah. audit, yes. And we got the results in 2022, correct? Correct. Yeah, the, the performance audit is more detailed. I think um, inflation is already going through the roof. Our pockets are already tight. You know, residents' pockets are already tight. You know, unless the Biden administration is able to fix something, you know, who knows? No comment on that. Um, we can. Uh, I, I hate to go for a levy, and I'd rather not use the word levy until we can find the money internally and see if there's anything we're doing wrong. I don't. Yeah, I'm not pushing this because I because uh, I assume there's any types of fraud. That's the last thing on my mind. It's just the way you look at it. Hey, doing it dumb, doing it's too much. Make coffee at home. It just gets those uh, small pennies here and there and we to save internally before we start demanding flood is me approved. So if I can make a motion to take a lot until we get from the elected like department on that. Second. Mr. Kenny. Yes. Mr. Sanchez. Yes. Mrs. Deaver. Yes. <clears throat> motion to approve a service order from the Verizon for vehicle tracking engine. Connected data to all dash cam for 25 road and park vehicles at 49.90 per vehicle, totaling 14,970 per year, to be divided by the road and park funds based on assigned vehicles. I would like to take that. I, um, at this time, would like to see what we're going to audit. We might as well see if we need to spend $15,000 on that, and if we're going to audit for $60,000 dollars for the park to be audited at that time i'm thinking another fifteen thousand is an awful lot we might as well wait and see if we're going to do an audit 
I understand your point, I really do. Mm -hmm. But uh, this is going everywhere nationwide. All these uh, contractor businesses, they got cameras on their on their vehicles. They got GPS trackers on their vehicles. Um, it's something that is not that I was not pushing because I felt the road is have any type of negligence, but this honestly will protect the residents as well as our employees. Uh, you know this as well as I do how many times we get phone calls saying that one of our road employees is cussing our resident. All we would have to do is hit play in the video we'd be able to see it. Um, it's got an I don't need feature or a uh, maintenance feature. We know our vehicles were just driving up and down the streets and not doing what they're supposed to do. Um, I'm all for this and I understand your point with the whole audit. However, regardless if the audit comes back good or not, this is something I think that we should be doing. Everyone in this nation is doing it and it is beneficial. I know the police cameras, those come, those uh, body cameras were probably virtual at the beginning and now we don't want anyone without it. It protects them, protects residents. I think this is beneficial for us. I would like to see it move forward. Are we putting on every, like, all our big trucks too? Yes, yeah, so not like a backhoe right now. Right? Just our pickup trucks, the ones that uh, carry the salt. The dump trucks. trucks. The dump trucks. So the, so the dump trucks really don't get used a lot. That's, I mean, do we revise this possible and break it down? Because most of those big trucks sit there mm -hmm. for all year until winter breaks. I mean, we can always, honestly, the way this, uh, the plan works is we can add on two or three vehicles and then take off two or three vehicles. All the insulation and the insulation is great. So we can table this until next meeting so we can get the, I mean, if you have all the information, that'd be great to share. Yeah, it's, it is the price. It's just forty nine ninety per vehicle. Regardless, we have 100 vehicles or two, that's the price. So if you wanted to just take down those. I'm sorry, I'm not, 49 what? That's all right. That's all right. So that's how much it is each year. Okay. All right, that's how much monthly is 25 times 1895 for the dual AI dash cam. It's yearly. But we can always just take away the three vehicles that Mr. Cat is talking about. And then when they do go in service, like if you can go in service for the winter, we can add them on like $200 extra. Mike, do we have the way I have a GPS system on on this already? Um, we had a system, I think it went, um, it came obsolete about 2014 at that time, we, we decided not to upgrade it. Did it have any effectiveness? You know, that was so long ago. I mean, there was times that we had to refer to what a truck was doing. I could, you know, I can tell you specifics. Of, but there were times that we, when we went to it to see, you know, if we could confirm, um, you know, what we're being told either by a resident or an uh, employee. And who, who is in charge of this? Who is the monitor this? Because I know I'm it, it, it would have been, it would have been me, I think, I had the only access to it at the time. You can go on a website and, and anybody using the ID and the password can, can, can monitor. I don't know, Robert, is that how this works yeah. out? Yeah. Chief, for you. With your body cameras and everything, following the laws, uh, how, the, how does this work for us? Uh, the body cameras, um, under the proper finance code, there's certain things that, uh, you know, under the public records request, we can give up, uh, you know, some skill in the juvenile, inside somebody's house, certain, certain guidelines we have to. We have to follow if somebody requests body camera of an incident. We have to take that, look at it, look at what we can give out, what we can't, what we can't give out. Then we have to sit there and be back at and then before we give it out. So I guess for for us now, for employees, the township may be different what you can give out and what you can't. I have to uh, talk to the Robert, is that okay if we table this so we make sure that everything's great? Talk to the prosecutor, we yeah. table to the next meeting, yes. Okay. <clears throat>
table to do it. Mr. Yes. 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 And this was on in October, and the operator hadn't done that. So she did that right after the last trustee meeting. She'll actually go before the board this Thursday. I don't anticipate any problems, so we don't cross your You're formal. And if, and if she doesn't get approved by the board of appeals, she can't. But, but I don't anticipate any problems. Okay, she definitely Motion to rescind request for hearing made on October 24, 2022 for Broward's Bar and Grill, LLC, Moon Dickens says Broward's Bar, 3661 Mahoney Avenue, Austin, Thompson, Jackson, Ohio, 44515, permit 092410001, permit class D5. So moved. Second. This is Dieter. Second. Yes. Mr. Santos? Yes. Mr. Yes. This time now we would do public response and this would be on camera. So anyone that wishes to go on camera, sir? I just want to You have to come up to the podium, sir, please. And oh, I don't talk in front of people. <laughs> <laughs> you, have to, you have to come up to the podium and state your name and address. You got this. <laughs> Steve Dapp, uh, very good at work. Uh, the storm source. I want to know how they're paid for right now. If you want to put an additional 11 to 11 or something on our money for the storm source. Well, if they're paid out of the road fund or the general fund. When we work on them, I mean, the guy's wages are paid out of the road fund and their benefits. Uh, I didn't know why you needed an additional 11 fund. Well, if you're not using that money at the time, I can not go to the bank and wait for when you do need it. I guess my answer would be, yeah, you can take it in. We're using money up on the storm sewer that we could also use for road resurfacing. And everybody here knows what what the needs are for road resurfacing. I mean, that's the best answer I can give you. Right. Well, then let me ask you another question. Your road surfacing when bring a company in, they black top, they put two inches of black top down, and it lasts for two years. What good is that? Why aren't you going to another company or something? Instead of keep keep going to the same company and they're doing they're doing their job so that they can uh, I guess that's uh, job security or whatever you want to call it, and they go back out and do it again. No, we we, we actually haven't had the same company. We well, the lowest bidder, so we've gone from company to company over the years. Right, I'm just asking because you know, uh, you go and get a price on on your driveway. They tell you you've got to have four inches of blacktop down. There's a road out here that's four inches. Yeah, two inches at a time. It's not going to last when you're putting a little coat on there. We that's put, just my my opinion of it. Well, that's what everybody puts down. They put down. We compress. We compress it to an inch and a half. And that's what they do. They do what they do, and that's what they've been doing for years. They compress it to four inches. In a case, and we've had cases where we've resurfaced, and the next year the road has blown up. And in those cases, then we you've got to go in and you've got to take out the complete road, put it under drains, and, and put the base back in, and then then you resurface it. And a lot of the roads, I'll admit, are have were not built correctly when they were built years ago, and so we're dealing with that problem now. Just a question. Yeah. Anybody else on camera? Yes, sir. It's, I, I like his the way he thinks. <laughs> well, I've never been a good speaker. I always took the F in high school. <laughs> but uh, it's something that's. Uh, Name and address. Alex Terleski. Alex Chris Terleski, 3919, on Wood Avenue. Um, my mother's. Buried down at uh, uh, 
a four mile run cemetery. Um, I didn't, I wasn't aware of the new rules and regulations that you guys have until I went to uh, <coughs> fix the uh, solar light that was uh, pulled out and laid on the ground. And then I seen your note um, saying no solar lights and I'm all for the not putting the Christmas decorations up uh, three weeks before, taking them down before July. I'm all for keeping that cemetery gorgeous. You did a beautiful job tearing the house down, putting the new fence up. It looks great. Um, you know, stuff like that. But the um, only thing that I'm upset about is the rock and the edging. Is it okay if I pass? Yes, sir. Give you guys a. This is my mother's grace. I do landscaping, grass cutting, and um, I tried to make it look special for her over there. And um, I do spend a lot of time there taking care of it. Um, I know Township has a tough time cutting grass, uh, going around everything. I do the same thing. I go back and I blow the grass out and pick through the rocks and clean it. I don't have a problem with that. But I just can't see. Um, they want me to tear the rock out. It just killed me. I'll, I'll make this comment on this. If all of the edging was done like this, the cemeteries would look a lot nicer. But well, unfortunately, that's how I am. Um, you know, that's not the case. And what we did come up with was we've never allowed edge, but we didn't right. enforce it. Okay. And I always thought it would be easier for the guys to even cut around because it's easier for me. And she's been there for 11 years already. Yeah. I mean, we have the position of, I mean, if, if we approve it, yours, because yours is nice, then everybody else thinks theirs is nice too. And I've got to tell you something. I know. They're not nice. I it's know. not a cemetery. I've seen some there. Yeah. They're, 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 yeah but, and you know. we went to every other cemetery. We looked at it. Nobody allows edging. We actually went and inspected the cemetery. You know, everybody keeps it simple. Yeah. You know, they have the grass right up to the stone. You got to have a, 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 a flag in a metal oak, oak, uh, right container, which we'll provide. I, we'll I, provide. I'm all for that. I'm all for that. Yeah. And, our, and we're allowing the wreaths, you know, on holidays, week before, week yeah. after, Christmas season, we're allowing that's, them. That's fine. It's I, just, you know I, what, I, if everybody did this, this would have, this wouldn't have been an issue right. like yours. But unfortunately, that's the only part. Everybody does it. Right. Well, I thought I'd ask. Okay, thank you. Anybody else on camera that would like to speak briefly? <laughs> So I'm here with my club, Women from the Austin Town Junior Women's League, and we're just here to express our appreciation for the leadership of the town. The ten department heads are here today, and that's the only reason we're here. Um, we've partnered with a lot of you, with the trustees. We've done things at the 911 park, and the trunk of tree, the Easter egg, that kind of stuff. We've partnered with Todd with the pollinator garden, the little libraries there. We fed the road department, the police department, and I think Andy we cleaned up one of your uh, fire stations and fire fires for you guys. So, uh, um, and Jim at the, oh, Jessica, sorry. <laughs> Jim at the, you know, you guys always make it wonderful for us and facilitate for us to be able to use your, uh, and see the for our meeting and everything else. So, with your permission, um, we'd like to offer you a small token of our appreciation for the public. Okay. Thank you. Is that it? Only. <laughs> <laughs>
Well, thank you very much. We appreciate that. Thank you. Anybody else on camera? <laughs> I kind of agree with Mr. Kent on the, you know, the ABC water fund stuff. But if we got to pay 37 bucks a year, I think we just pass a one no levy and all the money stays here. I can't see giving it to somebody else. We only use so much a year, we we'll have to look for money. What if we don't use it for three years? What happens to the rest of the money? You know, the company goes belly up. I don't know who that guy is. So if it stays here, it's another fun we can use it for the storm sewer collapse and rainy day fund, whatever you want to call it. So I think it, I think that's what we need to do. We should do. It's our money. And do what we need to do with and I don't agree with, I guess, the cameras and the trucks or whatever. I mean, that's $15,000 a year we can use elsewhere. It all adds up, so. That's all I got to say. Appreciate your opinion. All right, thank you. thank you. Anybody else on camera? At this time? Okay. I got gotcha. you. <laughs> Um, I know they're going to make stats representing the <clears throat> ball field at the end of that so Boston. Um, I just want to introduce myself. I'm the new president of Boston New Football Cheerleading. Um, I hope you all support the Cats in the Township this year going into this is two years since we've had the merger. Um, this is two years since the Colts and Middle Falcons became one team. This was <clears throat> um, this was at the urging of started way back when, I don't know how many people know Phil Annarella, he was uh, the varsity coach for Fitch, uh, he passed away, but his goal was to have one football team in Austin. Um, coach Parker took over the high school, we had discussions, and we were to become, get rid of the Colts and Falcons, and become one Austin down Falcon team, so you're a Falcon from the beginning, all the way up through the high school program. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> we've had a lot of great success on the field over the past three years, um, but since we've taken over, uh, since we've merged and taken over, there has been some financial problems, those are worked out, but this year what we're looking to do is um, we want to purchase an ADD for our field. Um, I don't know if anybody's seen what's happened on the professional level. One of my goals uh, was to work to get our organization an ADD that will benefit everybody at the field and our players that are on the field as well. So what we do, our organization is 501c3, we are tax deductible, we run solely on donations, and it's a shameless plug for me, but this year we're running a golf outing, and we're running a Mother's Day flower sale, that our, all those funds are gonna go towards the purchase, training, and construction of an AED for our uh, program that will travel with us wherever we go. It'll be portable, um, we have a couple quotes we're looking at, but if you have any any questions, any information, you can email me, austintownyfootball at gmail.com, go to our Facebook page, Austin Town New Football, or call me, my number's on the Facebook page, or um, on the Gmail. You can get all of me any way you want. I'm just looking for the support of the township, and I appreciate it. Thank you. Um, you did already have a fundraiser, correct? And did you do well with that? Um, I understand that you had a fundraiser. We did a block poll fundraiser for the yes. Super Bowl. Mm -hmm. It wasn't as profitable as we hoped. Uh, it, just, it was kind of watered down this year. Okay. We had, <laughs> the, when I posted mine for the block poll, I saw that week eight others posted. And it was, it was all the same pool that I was looking for, it was the same participation pool. So we had about 70% participation. Uh, we made about $650 just on that. Block. So, um, how much money have you got, have you lost from donations down? How much are you looking to to get? We have, um, and I'm not sure if I'm if I'm wrong, but uh, I believe we have around thousand dollars towards that right now. Okay. And the quote that we have for training, storage, 
um, the training pads, the back of battery, the travel case, the storage case, uh, the quote I have, I have quotes between $3,000 and $5,000. Thank you. Uh, Yes, so uh, we had talked to uh, Bill Pope and that kind of process from the Baseball Association, and <clears throat> he did it on behalf of both entities. And our goal was is uh, we had a uh, Walmart donation, and a lot of times we will put that back in the medical thing. So our goal was to purchase that off of uh, one of our donations uh, to be able to purchase one for each entity. Uh, we were just trying to make sure that we had that funding secured before we could move forward with it. Uh, we traditionally will handle the training and, and do all of that. Uh, there is an annual inspection, so the ones that we, we've done through Park, we've done through North Softball, uh, we take care of all of that. So that is the actual intent for us to try to help them out with that. Um, and I, I believe we should still be able to do that. Uh, traditionally, what we do is we will get refurbished ones. Uh, we actually, even from the fire department, our, our cardiac monitors and our APDs, we usually buy refurbished because mm -hmm. it's, it's a tremendous savings. So again, that was that was what our goal was. Thank you. Anybody else on camera? Anyone off camera? This time, I'm going to do remarks from the board, and that would be a seat. Um, excuse me. I just want to wish the spring sports were awesome. Good luck this year. Um, and a successful winter um, sport events with wrestling, um, basketball. So, um, just a little bit more. I guess up here, when we're voted in, um, these guys are all hired and they basically listen to us and budgeting and everything out of the sort you know they, they do a great job um, but when it comes to priorities we have to sometimes have to venture off what a what their budget is and maybe remove something to do something else um, so that that was the reason why I brought up the levy um, we were budgeted this year and might wanted to buy a front loader for the, for the uh, road department. Well, with these issues with these storm drains, you can't. So we have to move that money over to make sure that these jobs get done. And we just got to make sure, cross our fingers, that the duct tape holds on to the front loader. Um, those are the responsibilities of us to make sure that, one, we're safe out there in the public. Two, we do our best to replenish our new stuff, our old stuff, with new stuff. Um, we try to work every which way grants uh, funding from the government, but I mean we're able. Mike says we're able to move on these three projects this year, but like I said, we're not going to be able to unless something happens with the um, county commissioners or some yeah you know, some money coming from the government that we won't buy it from this year. So but those those three projects will get done. Um, first, I'm glad to see that everyone is safe. I already see from the windstorm and there was a lot of damage and stuff. I definitely appreciate everything everyone's done. Our, our road department is out there and their time off, everything that the fire department and the police department has done. Um, they definitely did a great job. I know they saw them there still out there without power. Um, hopefully, everything's okay. If they need anything, obviously, all I can do is make a phone call. We do what we can to help out. Um, obviously, this is a controversy with the old ABC district. Um, Hey, if I ask to the pot, we get wheels spinning, we try to find money elsewhere, I'll do it. I'll take the arrows, I'll take the punches. Um, I've made it very clear since day one, initiating fee or a levy is not my first choice. Um, obviously, I've contacted our state representative, Al Petrona, Mike Lulley, contacted Congressman Bill Johnson. They're doing everything they can to find the funds, but it's not always guaranteed. So we have to definitely, it's important as elected officials is to work on the next option while you're waiting for that one to come back. Um, the ABC district, yeah, they do have the money, but the money that is collected, if it goes through, can only be used in Austin Town. 
It cannot be pulled, it cannot be touched by anything. And there's a wide variety of doors that are uh, opening, so you can get other grants as well. Like, for example, I'm just going to throw numbers out there. Um, as a township, it might be two or three grants you can apply for. But the district is 15 of them. So obviously the, uh, the amount of funds and opportunity that's out there is, is vast, it's a lot more. Uh, again, it is a last ditch effort. Um, I would prefer us to actually sit down and go over the budget and do a bar rescue first. Um, but if that's not the case, and I will push for an audit at the next meeting, which will include all the departments before I actually submit anything for a levy, we need to audit ourselves. It's important that we actually know how much money is coming in what is being spent that year for a new project, how much money is left over, and what we can do to properly fund these additional products. We can't sit there and go paycheck to paycheck. I live paycheck to paycheck. It's not good. As a township, we should not be living paycheck to paycheck. So it's our job to actually step up, roll up our sleeves, get money, and find the funds for the township without going to them. But if it ends up going to the point where we have to go to the residents, we'll show you the work. It's our job to show you what we did, our due diligence, and let you guys know that we did everything we could before we actually went and actually held our hand out. Um, so that's about it, all I have. Um, we will have a town hall, pending the other two still agree. Um, I'm so waiting for a confirmation from the district. In case it's not us, I want the district there. Um, once that gets done, if we're still having it, we'll let the public know. Thank you. Okay, um, as a trustee and as a businessman, I have a problem with the audit, I'm sorry. Um, $60,000 just seems like a lot of money. When we have these people right up here that probably got over 50, 60 years of experience, um, and that's what we pay them for, is to make sure that they're doing the job that they're supposed to be doing, our employees. Um, so, if I could say like, I don't know, like, $60,000, if I spent $60,000, I'm gonna use my restaurant. If I spent $60,000 at my restaurant, I would expect at least $120,000 to $150,000 in return. So if I can see that we're gonna get that kind of return in this, I will, I will vote for it. Other than that, that's that's just how I feel. Um, anytime I spend money somewhere, I wanna make sure that I'm gonna make something out of it. That's the business woman in me. I love Austin Town, and I do want to watch where our money goes. So, um, but for that being said, we have an Easter egg hunt, and uh, this Easter egg hunt is April first, ten to twelve, in Austin Town Township Park. Um, we filled six thousand eggs, and all them ladies back there, most of them were there helping. Um, Mr. Santos was there, and. Yeah. <laughs> my husband was there. Some of my children were there. Um, this group over here was there. We had a lot of participants, and I really, really appreciate that. I hope that we can get to enjoy that, and the rain holds off. I've been watching it too early, though. It's <laughs> making me a little bit nervous. It's supposed to be about 50, 60 degrees, but there's a little bit of rain coming there. Um, I want to remind Three, everybody. Ten minutes. It'll change. <laughs> I want to remind everybody about the Fitch Drama Team for presenting Legally Blonde, the, the musical. I'm really going to try to be there. It's Austin Town Fitch High School, March 30th or 31st at 7 o'clock, and April 2nd at 3 o'clock. They've been working very hard on this, and I think it would be a great thing to go and see. And what else should I have? With that being said, I think I have, that's all I have to say. So. Yes, Mr. Cannon. Yes. 